This has been a Ferocious Shy Space Odyssey Network production. This is episode 140, Nasum. Uh, people not feeling a uh, segment of 2X. So we're going to talk about some of the companies um, that are against it, miners, people, a little bit about those who are supporting it, but in general, not everyone is kind of feeling the, the New York consensus solution, which is no surprise. Um, we'll talk about, we'll get into it, but basically, you know, once again, there's friction and uh, disagreement within the space. But before we get into that, uh, the news. So while this is not necessarily directly related to cryptocurrency or even blockchain-based technology, I think this is very important because I think what has happened with um, Bitcoin's release, this initial release back in 2009, um, and the buildup and all the different things that have happened within the cryptocurrency space, it's had a ripple effect into all sorts of different um, areas. And not necessarily just because people want to put blockchain technology into everything. It's just the very nature of a renewed effort to disrupt and to change um, existing marketplaces and actually, you might say, a hard push push to disrupt these um, hardline and uh, institutionalized systems. More so than I would say that the sharing economy is done. And we'll eventually talk about the sharing economy on a word from the metaverse. But here we go. Uh, Justin Kahn confirms a $10.5 million in funding for his legal tech startup, Artemon LTS. Uh, this is from Pet Crunch. So in April, we reported that Justin TB, founder and Y uh, Combinator alum, uh, Justin Kahn, has assembled a team to disrupt the legal industry and has raised $10 million to do so. This week, Khan confirmed that the company has completed its fundraising process, raising $10.5 million in what ended up being one of the biggest party rounds I've ever seen. Early this week, I, I met with Khan to discuss Arkham LTS. The LTS stands for Legal uh, Technology Services and the company plans. While Khan is still loath to go into all the details, citing some regulatory issues still being ironed out, he could provide some high-level perspective into where he believes Arkham can apply technology to the legal industry. As a power user of legal services over a decade in the startup industry, through the foundation and fundraising of startups like Justin TV, as well as work he's done as an investor and advisor to companies through Y Combinator, Khan said he was frustrated by how little technology was being used in the process of interacting with various law firms. Why don't law firms use project management software to track where they are in the process of completing a deal and let customers see that, Khan asked. But most important, in the way in which law firms interact with customers, Khan sees an opportunity to streamline the work that is done in-house to make it more manageable for lawyers and those who work at law firms. If you think about corporate legal work that is done today, some part of it is art and then some of it is repeatable process, Khan told me. It's those repeatable processes that the Arnhem team believe, believes is an innovative on to make things more efficient. Now onto the funding. As reported, the round was led by General Catalyst, what we didn't know at the time is that the finance, finance includes nearly 100 institutional and angel investors who came along for the ride. I'm going to list that of those investors are. So you get all that. Okay, so the question is, why aren't an LTC bother raising money for so many different stakeholders? Why not just get a few large checks for a few notable investors instead of lots of small checks for a bunch of VCs and angels? Uh, we're building a software to improve the delivery of legal work for these people, Khan told me. As a result, it makes sense to get a certain amount of buy-in from the industry. It's not just about the capital, but about getting the funnel of companies and individuals that could be potential customers as Artem goes through his product development phase and tries to achieve product market fit. As one example of how the company is already working to solve this problem, constant along the screenshot to the right are essentially showing how to use its own tools as part of the fundraising process, and by extension, how other entrepreneurs and investors can use these tools in the future. Khan promised more to come, including more detail about the tech the company is building and how it will begin to offer the technology to customers. But in the meantime, you probably have to imagine all the reasons you hate your law firm and what you think they can do better and take comfort in knowing that Justin is working to fix it. I have a link in the show notes to How I Stole Your Shy Coin, a CD Reddit post. It's by Michael Lynch. Um, it's a good read and just basically it's just all about you trying to protect yourself out there and the cryptocurrency space and about how to properly store and keep your information and not to how and how to get you know not get hoodwinked if you will. So on to the episode. 
Uh, this episode is not going to be too in depth. It's just going to cover just basically who kind of supports the Segwit, the Segwit two by X, and then who's really against it, and just the feelings about it. It's just kind of why there's a breakdown, just much like the Hong Kong uh, proposal. There was a big of a breakdown, if you will. So, so August first, the upcoming fork, the complete guide to securing your Bitcoin and the benefit fork. So this is just a kind of a breakdown of what a fork is. And we'll get into this when we talk about SegWit and SegWit to Bitcoin X. But I just wanted to let you know there's a link in the, the show notes called august.org, which will uh, let you know the kind of the breakdown of what's going on. What's going on? So for a, fr- for a few years, there's been a large debate in how to handle scaling in Bitcoin. Currently, most blocks are hitting the block size limit of one megabyte, resulting in high fees, slow transactions, thought put, and slow transactions. There's been several attempts to solve the scaling issue. Unfortunately, none of them clear victory, leading to multiple fraction, factions being formed. Each faction favors a solution, but these opposing factions will lead to the ruin of Bitcoin. Currently, one of those proposals, known as the user activated soft fork, is scheduled to go live on August 1st, 2017. Another group of miners has started their attention to create another fork of the blockchain if the user Activate software is indeed activated, splitting the Bitcoin chain into two. Uh, August1st.org does not aim to pick sides in the debate or propose to help the regu- help regular Bitcoin users safeguard their coins prior to the fork. And it just breaks that down. So there's a link in the show notes to that. And that is the, the, the possibility of what could happen uh, with SegWit 2.x versus user-activated software. So here's what Bitcoin.com. Uh, Chinese miners announced accelerated development and activation of Segwit 2x uh, by Kevin Helms. Uh, this was published June 18. So a new agreement had been struck among Chinese Bitcoin exchanges and mining companies representing the majority of the Bitcoin hashing power. They agreed to accelerate the development and activation of Segwit 2x scaling upgrade. Miners supporting Segwit 2x. Segwit 2x, also known as the New York Agreement, is an industry-wide compromise. The CEO and founder of Digital Currency Group. Very Silbert spearheaded and made to activate the segregated witness scaling upgrade of the Bitcoin. The plan initially gained popularity among a large group of Bitcoin miners and many businesses globally. And on Saturday, June 17, Silbert tweeted that Chinese member miners representing over 80% of the Bitcoin network hash rate have reconfirmed the support for Segwit 2x. The confirmation stems from an announcement made on Thursday by a coalition of Bitcoin miners exchanges known as the Chinese Bitcoin Roundtable. Uh, testing starts immediately. Signaling starts Monday. The group held a digital meeting in the Global Blockchain Summit that took place on June 14th and 15th in Chengdu, China. They reaffirmed their support for Segwit 2x and agreed to the new schedule to test and roll out Segwit 2x ahead of the competing VIP 148 launch date of August 1st. And according to t- Twitter user CN Ledger, the mining pools and exchanges that agreed to the aforementioned plan include Bitman's Ant Pool, BTC Top, BinX. BTC Pool, F2 Pool, Hubi, OK, Coin, uh, Via BTC, BW, OneHash, Canoe, Bat Pool, and BitCan. The group said loosely translated, in order to effectively solve the problem of Bitcoin network congestion, we will accelerate the development of the Bitcoin scaling solution and promote the sustainable health and stable development of Bitcoin. We immediately start the Bitcoin Consensus SegWit program, a BTC1 software test, and join TestNet 5. They further conveyed that we will, on Monday, June 19th, begin to vote to support Segwit 2x program, the group proclaimed. In order to avoid the using the BIP, one, uh, BIP 9 vote to influence the official voting results, we will write uh, NWA, NWA mark in the Coinbase base on behalf of the vote to support the New York Consensus 2x program. With the goal to release an official version as soon as possible, the group re- Group reiterate that we're eager to activate the New York Consensus 2x program by July 31st. Wu plans to prevent BIP 148. The event and announcement closely follows Bitman's release of, a, of its hard fork protection against user activated BIP 148, which CEO Jean Wu has described as an attack on Bitcoin. He spoke on a summit on June 14th on how to prevent BIP 148 activating outlining its weaknesses and the main weakness of BIP 148. Small hash per hour, slow block generation, transactions will get stuck and clogged up. There is no prevention from replay attacks. Users losing their bitcoins are almost, inevit- almost inevitable. Potential threats to the main chain. The threat to the whole community's economic uh, entity is an enemy. All exchanges will have to suspend bitcoin deposit withdrawals on August 1st. Actual community support is weak and will subject to further splits in the future. 
more um, 148 coins will emerge and split. Uh, the need for fast action. Many miners attending the summit feel that the Bitcoin Core developers do not honor a promise made in February 2016 at the Hong Kong consensus event, which is true. To hard fork the Bitcoin blockchain and raise the block size limit to 2 megabytes, enabling SegWit 2x would fulfill the two-year-old promise. Uh, the background to the New York consensus, Core did not honor the Hong Kong consensus. They refused to add block increase code in the Bitcoin software. Transaction fees have gone up crazy. The completely dissolution of the reserve key market. And 40% hashing power support for BU. 30% did not vote. And only 30% voted for SegWit. So there you have that, which is against, you know, BIP148, which is supposed to be activated August 1st. And they've already signaled for this, uh, with the NYA into the coin base by the miners. And again, to a reminder of what uh, BIP19 is, which was a uh, version of with timeout delay by Peter Will, Peter Todd, Gregory Maxwell, and Rusty Russell. Uh, this document specifies a proposed change to the semantics of versions field in the Bitcoin blocks, allowing multiple backward compatible changes, further calls soft forks to be deployed in parallel, to realize interpreting the version field as a bit vector, where each bit can be used to track an independent change. There are tallied each retarget. Once the consensus change exceeds or times out, there's a follow pause at which the bit can be reused for later changes. So this is to kind of prevent uh, a soft fork if you have, which is what uh, Bit 148 is. There are Bitcoin companies that are supporting SegWit user activated soft fork. Um, lately, there's been a lot of talk regarding the possibility of activation of user activated soft fork in order to implement the SegWit proposal without the need to reach minor consensus. An early look at the companies that have so far taken a stand in regards to user-activated software revealed that nine companies support SegWit um, user-activated software, while two others are ready for it, and the list follows. This is from uh, Nubian. Uh, Trezor and Valpotor are ready. Bitcoin India, Bitcoin Reminder, BitFury, Bitcoin, Coinit, uh, Freedom Node, Join Market, Samurai Wallet, and Wallet Time. So far, no company has proposed Proposed user activated soft fork, which has changed. This article is about two months old. Almost most companies have yet to input their stance regarding this subject. BitPay, for example, is not included. They have already announced their support for user activated soft fork during an episode of Let's Talk Bitcoin, uh, BitPay CEO. With large mining pools like Bitmain supporting Bitcoin Unlimited, it's highly unlikely that SegWit will reach the required 95% mining approval threshold unless those pools change their mind on update, um, which they have. And if the latest accusations regarding the Bitmain's secret advantage are true, it's unlikely they're even changing their stance on SegWit. And what is user activated soft fork? Uh, user activated soft fork is a soft fork that does not require minor approval, but counts instead on the nodes users to activate the soft fork themselves. This is done by releasing a new version of the Bitcoin client, in this case, Core. The client gives a block height limit in which the upgrade will become active. And it kind of goes on a little bit. So, Bitmain announced hard fork protection and plan against user activated soft fork. Um, this is their announcement. I have the article on Bitcoin.com that talks about it, but this is their announcement itself. A contingency plan against the user-activated software of Bit148. Definition. This was originally translated in um, translated version um, for Chinese. Um, they define what a user-activated software is, user-activated hard fork. Uh, Bit148 is a node that has implemented Bit48 consensus rules. So original chain. Okay. So wipeout. If a user activated chain is activated and the user um, if the user activated software chain gains the majority hash rate, then the nodes following the original chain will reorganize and begin to follow uh, that chain. In such an event, a significant number of financial transaction records will disappear. This is a risk that uh, USF nodes impose on nodes intending to follow the original chain. In contrast to a UAHF does not threaten the nodes following a different rule set with the same risk. Uh, bit one. The bit Nine version bit in the block header used a signal for segway activation. A stagnation risk. A blockchain without mining support may suddenly stop being extended because the economic incentive for miners is low, and a minority fork like user activated soft fork is under serious risk of permanent stagnation. So, background. On May 24, 2017, a significant economic majority, more than 80% of the entire hashing power, and 80% of transaction so source software of service in the Bitcoin industry came to agreement in New York, the New York Agreement, on a tangible steps to scale Bitcoin in the near future. Representatives of Bitcoin Core declined to invite the invite to attend the meeting. This agreement is the hard work of those who sincerely believe that Bitcoin and those entrepreneurs or investors who have strong financial interest in scaling Bitcoin 
quickly in the United Nations. Bitmain is a supporter of the agreement, and we support the agreement, and we want to make it happen as soon as possible. A software pro project, project BTC1, which is addressed in the New York Agreement, has been under active development and will likely deliver a consensus rule change plan called SegWit2x. The testnet for SegWit2x is already live, and alpha versions of the software will be released on June 16th, and Everseed is still on Prime. And there's a GitHub, Reddit discussion, and a mailing list. Despite the agreement, the user-activated software um, AstroTurf movement continues to get lots of airtime on sister forms, many of which are controlled by single anonymous individuals. Many of the software developers who work in the software project called BIP.4 are also supporting it, and BIP.148 poses a significant risk for the Bitcoin ecosystem. So we're preparing a contingency plan to protect the economic activity on the Bitcoin blockchain from this threat. The New York Agreement is also continuously and intentionally sabotaged by a group of software developers working on Bitcoin Core. We must also be prepared for the disruptive risks that the USASF activation will bring to the network. The New York Agreement is very conservative and aimed at bringing peace within the Bitcoin community on a simple but artificial escalated scaling issue. If somehow the New York Agreement cannot prevent a chain split, we will have to be prepared. The purpose of this blog is to announce our UAHF contingency plan for the USF BIP 148. We need a contingency plan against BIP 148, and according to BIP 148, when the chain MTV is at the, or beyond Tuesday, October 1st, 2017, around 12 a.m. GMT, uh, BIP 148 nodes will begin to orphan Bitcoin blocks not signaling BIP 1 as it is a uh, user-activated software. This consensus rule change made the rule set smaller than the original chain before BIP 140 activation. And BIP 148 nodes will follow the new BIP 148 chain if there's any more than zero hashing power supporting it. If the hash rate block back in the chain is zero, BIP 148 nodes will find their chain unable to be extended. If there is hashing power supporting the BIP 148 chain, it does not need to be a hash rate majority to allow the chain to be extended. Even if there's only one person solving hash by hand, given enough time, the BIP 148 chain will be extended by another block. And according to the existing hash rate disruption, some well-known mining pool operators have stated they will support the user-activated software by allowing miners' choice, although their total hash rate is not enough to secure a majority. The company hiring many crucial Bitcoin protocol developers controls some of its own small hashing rate now, according to its CEO. So the Bitcoin network is at a high risk of splitting on August 1st, 2017. Uh, BIP 148 is very dangerous for exchanges and other businesses. There is no sign of significant economic support behind BIP 148, and when it's alive as a blockchain, the economic support will most likely be based on circulation. The mining activity behind a USASF chain might stop without notice, and investors who buy in the BIP 148 propaganda may lose all their investment. Any exchange that decides to support a USF token after the forking point need to consider the stagnation risk attached to it. There's no replay protection on BIP 148 chain, and the transactions will be broadcast on both chains, and users cannot prevent them from being confirmed on both. Exchanges must stop withdrawals and deposits at the forking point for some time and deploy their own coin splitting methods. If you want to learn more, please read for the reference section of the post on mitigating Bitcoin fork risks during network upgrade. Uh, the USFS chain presents a risk of the original chain being wiped out. If there's no contingency plan, all economic activity that occurs on the original chain after the USF forking point will risk the risk of being wiped out. This has disastrous consequences for the entire Bitcoin ecosystem. UASF is an act attack against users and entrepreneurs who disagree with activating SegWit right now without a block size increase, which is the very important clause in the, U the Hong Kong agreement made by the global Bitcoin community in February 2016. The chain reorganized risk is more significant than imagined, as analyzed by Peter R. in Burp 055. And it kind of breaks that down. Protection plan. The plan is a user activated hard fork or UAHF. You can find technical specs here. The activation time is configurable. We'll do a hard fork at 12 hours and 20 minutes later than uh, the user activated soft fork. And there is a must be big rule of the fork, fork block. The block size of the fork block must be larger than uh, one megabyte. And fork block means that the first block which adopts the consensus rules change. It will accept block from which the size is less than eight megabytes and we Miners will soft one with a block size to less than 2 megabytes. There will be a soft fork rule added to the protocol to limit the SIG ops per transaction within 20k. The block size will not be part of the hard-coded consensus rule for us in the future after the fork block. Miners who generate large blocks will be punished by economic incentives but not limiting the block size. 
There will be a replay attack protection that is unavailable for that is available for exchanges and wallet developers, and you can find the specs here. Bitmain will use some of his own hashing power and work with the developer community to have a contingency plan based on a UAHF. We will develop options for miners to voluntarily join us. Bitmain will, will mine the chain for a minimum of 72 hours after the BIP148 forking point, with a certain percentage of the hashing rate supplied by our own mining operation. Bitmain will likely to release immediately the mine blocks to the public network, unless circumstances call for it, which means that Bitmain will mine such a chain privately first. We tend to follow the situation to release the mine blocks to the public or a non-exhaustive list. 1. The BIP148 chain is active and essentially gains significant support from a mining industry, i.e. after a BIP148 has essentially split the chain. The market sentiment for a big block hard fork is strong and economic rationale drives us to mine. For example, the exchange rate is favor of big block Bitcoin. If there's already a significant amount of other miners mining a big block chain publicly and we decide that it's a rationale for us to mine on top of that chain, in such case, we also consider joining the chain to give us give up our privately mined chain so the public UHF chain will not be under the risk of being reorganized. Uh, once Bitmain starts to mine a UHF chain publicly, we will mine it persistently and ignore short-term economic incentives. When we leave a roadmap, including an option to adjust block size, will serve users better, so we expect it to attract a higher market price in the long term. The economic network will expand faster, and the winning odds will be higher in the highly competitive cryptocurrency market. We share the same belief that with some very early Bitcoiners that decentralized, decentralization means that more than 1 billion people in 200 countries are using Bitcoin as a saving currency and payment network, and that it, co co that it compromises of hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin services, traders, exchanges, and software. We do not believe that decentralization means a 1 megabyte block size limit or responsibility to constrain the block size so that a Raspberry Pi can run a full node with a fee per Bitcoin transaction higher than the daily income in most developing countries. We believe that Bitcoin needs to offer people an alternative to flourish without depending on powerful authorities to charge fees that can be as high as $100 transaction. And then it talks about software development, uh, future roadmap. If the New York Agreement activates, we wish the New York Agreement would be deployed, would be developed and carried out. It is the last hope for Bitcoin to scale I unitedly in the face of BIP 148 threat, and we will try our best to deploy and activate it as soon as possible. If BIP 148 activates, then UHF will, will be alive on the same day, and the UHF chain will protect the economic transactions that are under the risk of reorganizing because of the user activated software. Uh, later, we will support the activation of SegWit on the user activated hard fork, and if there's no patent risk associated with SegWit, and if his arbitrary discount rate of witness data segment is removed, the weight parameter, which is designed for artificial race, may need to be deleted, and we need to be frank and straightforward in the software code about different limitations and different kinds of blocks and other parameters. A SegWit without the artificial discount rate will treat legacy transactions type fairly and will not give SegWit transactions an unfair advantage. It will also help the capacity increase effect of SegWit more significantly than the discount rate. We also push for and encourage changes in code and main block or essential blocks that will make Lightning Network run more safely and reliably than the course present version of SegWit does. Extension blocks will develop a framework to encourage multiple protocol development teams to bring innovation and capacity in the Bitcoin protocol. Some important but aggressive innovators can be introduced without affecting all Bitcoin users or companies around the world. This will accelerate innovation in the Bitcoin protocol. Sidechains will also be encouraged after the associated security issues have been reviewed by the technical communities and miners are generally driven by the hope that Bitcoin will be a success. We will encourage and help various multi-layer multi -layer solutions to come into production. As very early investors in Roostock, we identify the potential of another important competing cryptocurrency, and we're already working closely with authors of other multi-layer solutions. A new SPV security service by full nodes should be com promoted, and further research and libraries that are compatible with the SPV model should also be promoted among wallet developers. And we'll talk about SPVs. A Bitcoin can combine Bitcoin NG by M and Moon by Sugo together, then a throughput increase of the current Bitcoin network to up to 100 times can be easier to achieve for the block size around 100 kgb, but of a higher block generation frequency. The original NG at its hard fork proposal, but we can soft fork it into the protocol with extension block framework. At the same time, Roostock code founded by the inventor of Luma, is also trying to implement Luma on Rock Bluestock. Luma will work perfectly with Lightning Network. It will be interesting to see what the implementation will bring Luma into production first and what it's set, in what ways. 
Uh, shorter second shoots are also in late stage review. The diversification of client development should be promoted. Defensive consensus concept is under development and will help in the mining industry. Defensive consensus will help the Bitcoin network work safely while multiple implementations work together. There will be other good inventions in the Bitcoin community that have not well been promoted because of various reasons, and we seek to actively work with those innovations. Uh, Burp 56 will develop to manage the block size issue before a fully automatic and mathematical block size governance model is very widely accepted. As evidence in the past years of debate, miners have proved to be very conservative and willing to work with a wider economic community, though the roadmap of the block size increase for the next few, few years is below. Uh, now is one megabyte size. Uh, August 2017 is two megabytes. Uh, September f- four megabytes. April 2018 five. August 8th of 2018. April in 2019 eleven. In August 2019-16. And after 2019 August, depending on further research. Weaker blocks will have to be de- developed and deployed before the block size increase reaches 8 megabytes. And then has a reference list. So that is their position. Basically, they're stating that if the user activated soft fork were to occur, they're going to fork the system. And so a lot of people were, were very upset by that. And then after Bitmain's statement, you started getting people that were uh, very much against um, what has happened. So here's um, one company, BitSquare, which is a decentralized um, Bitcoin exchange, will support USF Bitcoin and not Bitmain coin. Today, Bitmain released a blog post. This was written by Manfred Carrier, the founder of BitSquare about their plans, how to deal with a user-activated soft fork. Here's another good summary of it by Jimmy Song. This uh, announcement of Bitcoin Bitmain is great news for Bitcoins. It removes a lot of uncertainty and gives a lot of support for the user-activated side. So Bitmain has become the biggest supporter for uh, user-activated soft fork by making it easier for those who have preferred a more cautious and conservative support, supporters of Bit149 like me, to get a more clear position. Why? Because the hard fork, which will very likely happen and include features like an 8 megabyte blocks or even unlimited block size, as well as a heavily Bitcoin unlimited influence roadmap, is a very drastic divergence from the current version of Bitcoin. Not to talk about the unhealthy, unhealthy influence of the monolithic ASIC and mining companies, company who have proved many times how damaging they are for Bitcoin. ASIC boosts, imp- lead, empty blocks, blocking segue. As it is for the hard fork, it's also much clearer which of both coins, if both should survive, will be considered the real Bitcoin and which one the altcoin. Theoretically, the unchanged Bitcoin chain must be a valid alternative as well, and the real Bitcoin, but it can be assumed it will not get significant support to survive and will be vulnerable to the wipeout risk as well as replay attacks. So what reduces the choice to two options? Uh, the Bitmain coin hard fork with an 8 megabyte blocks in a BU roadmap or user activated Bitcoin, original Bitcoin with an enforced SegWit activation should be an re- easy choice for most readers. SegWit itself has an overwhelming support. Only way the strategy how to activate it was, a, was not supported so widely. This is not out of question. It's not supported user activated software means to support Bitmain. We cannot be neutral or passive. There's another important factor. The hard fork requires software updates much more extensive than the user activated software version bit chain. Besides the risk, they will mean that all agnostic and neutral and passive users or companies will likely go with the user-activated software as uh, the least distributed, expensive, and risky option. Same is true for SPV wallets. Bitcoin J, which is used for BitSquare, has a check for block size and will reject the Bitmain chain, so we have a less trouble with the potential mess of mixed chains. There are so many other problems or risks. We can expect the Bit- Bitmain will use its hash power to attack the U.S. Uh, activated soft fork chain if they feel the need for that. They might lead to all kinds of unpleasant situations like long confirmation times, unclear amounts of confirmation to be considered safe, very volatile attack fees, and more. And it also is not clear which forms of attack can occur and how to protect users from those. E.g., Bitmain can silently mine it and on a uh, user activated soft fork and then make huge reorganization and validate a lot of blocks. And if the fiat all client side has been settled will lead to BT buyers who has lost his BTC. For an exchange that means undefined and uncontrolled risk, also on the legal side, besides the risk, there will likely be a huge effort support and arbitration which will kick us back with our roadmap. 
For all those reasons, we will need to halt trading on base square by revoking the two arbitrator nodes. Both are run by me, and users cannot take an offer or create an offer if there's no arbitrator available. But no worries, we have an exit strategy. With the next release, we will support multiple base currencies, so the users can choose which base currency or market he or she wants to use. Currently, it is only Bitcoin. Then there will be Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Doge. Dash is planned as well, but requires more effort, and Namecoin still has not a PS2SH, but so we'll add as soon that is implemented. All of the other interesting coins, which are very different to Bitcoin, cannot be added soon as it requires a lot of development effort, but is planned for the future extend to those as well. We started with those which cause the least effort, and Litecoin has sufficient liquidity and hashing power to be considered a realistic alternative. By using another coin as a base currency, BitSquare is not dependent on what's going on in the Bitcoin blockchain anymore, and all the problems which might arise from the fork scenarios are out of the system, similar to the banking system or other altcoins. The selection of Bitcoin was possible by arbitrator will only start to register once the situation is settled and can be considered safe again. It might be in a week, it might be three months, who knows. So people who trade both the user-activated stock for Bitcoin and the Bitmain coin against LTC or Doge and BitSquare, those traders are responsible for themselves how to deal with any possible risk and problems when sending the Bitcoin. It's just another altcoin in a selected base currency, LCC or Doge. Is the currency which provides the security by utilizing features like multi-sig. BitSquare does not know anything about the Bitcoin network in such a case. There's a question how to name those coins repeating change. I would suggest to keep the ticker BTC for the user-activated Bitcoin and use the UASF in the brackets as a postfix to make a more explicit BTC Bitcoin user activated software. But for the Bitmain coin, I would suggest either BMC or BUC, Bitcoin Unlimited coin. Be assured the selection from the ticker BUC has nothing to do with the many bugs the Bitcoin Unlimited devs have produced in the past. Ready now to add the user USF prefix to the Big Square t- Twitter handle. Thanks, Bitmain, for making this situation much easier. And that was put out June 14. Third factor is the 8 gigabyte is the actual proposed limit to the low, but 2 gigabytes is the soft limit and minor the official limit is the for now. This means that larger blocks of 2 gigabytes is legal for most of the network and minor, including the popular music off of the blocks of the future. The CC shows that 8 gigabytes is not a hard limit, because larger blocks are actually possible to use in the hard form. Now, here is some of the three places. The stack of bit names is a new bit in a sensitive hash name, and from one chain to another. This will indeed create a replay detection as user activated software chain transactions will slowly map the adding of bit in your signature to bit name chain transaction mode. The transactions on user activated software chain will not be valid in the bit name chain transaction mode. So they don't want to have where uh, both points pop up on, uh, on a chain, they pop wipe out and replay the share with Ethereum. Additional release. Uh, these paragraphs are perhaps the most confusing part of the document. Whether what are they saying? What is the name of the mine or pin? Here's what it boils down to: the pin will mine the hard fork privately for at least three days. If the user activated software is weak, the pin will give up on the privately mined block and do everything alone. If the user activated software looks strong, the pin will release the privately mined block and invite other miners to join them and trigger the hard fork. I'm not sure how this can be. It can be changed here without a hard fork and started. Two, I'm assuming it refers to the past featured markers or any peer to peer transactions. Bottom line, August 4th is the earliest date you will find out the image will be released and hard work and it will start mining all our dead boxes first and actually release the private mine in three days after that. Then he goes down and talks about future upgrades. The rest of the press release that may have announced the new features will be added. Segment with a different way, position block to the side chain, SDD service built into the full node, uh, Bitcoin and G. Email on week blocks. So this means for you, if you're watching this date closely, you know that August 1st is the major date on the horizon. You should be very careful about the transactions after that. We now know that bit door is the earliest possible date of the hard fork. Depending on the hash rate, it may still be unsafe to transact on either fork and tax and cost wipeout or on either chain. So my warning still stands to be extremely careful to transact on the after August 1st. Conclusion. Good night press release is what is called a game theory incredible threat. They certainly have the mining power and the cash on them. Project. As most of the hard fork ideas come from Bitcoin Unlimited, they also have the software ready. However, you may feel about is reliability. They are also just real problems with the software like the repay, wipeout protection. We 
we think of a game theory perspective, the question has to be, why is Bibbing a game First, Bibbing's plan to prevent wipeout. This can be seen as inclusive and we were to secure any minor wars we make, but more importantly, as a way to ensure other miners can mine safely on their chain. Second, given a roadmap of future plans makes developing on the chain more attractive, it can be seen as maneuvering the game industry's support, it's not a coincidence that the future they announced in the roadmap, corresponding concerns with different businesses. This was an utterly predictable response to user activated software, and it was surprising if USF activated software to stay this threat. Whether that name will fall through is another matter entirely, but rest assured there are se severe consequences for the network. It seems like Newton's first mission to you and you might be right. There are alternatives, right? We may get to everyone what they want. Unfortunately, the Civil War has gone possible enough that we may be too late. So that's an examination of a pet plus release there. Now here's the problems that people have been having with um, the SegWit uh, proposal um, that we talked about and broke down in the previous episode. Uh, you know, it's top secret. Bitcoin scaling plan SegWit 2x leaves more questions than answers. This is from CoinDesk, uh, published June 23rd, the finalist at Hard Edition. Uh, after years of debate, the Segway 2x scaling proposal looks like it could play a full role in finally taking the point step forward. For the coders and companies involved in doing this, some of the development behind closed doors is a way of working that some argue runs counter to the Bitcoin's value proposition and the decentralized money that no one person or business involves. The project, which follows a long line of proposals for increasing Bitcoin transactions and costs, is now supported by an all time high of nearly 90% of the Bitcoin mining hash rate. Since the current method of triggering major code changes relies on the support of mining pool, it seems like you, the first portion of the agreement of SegWit will activate on the network by the end of July. Although it's hard to say what will happen with the rest of the proposal, which is raising the block size from 2 to 5 million. But while SegWit 2x is perhaps the most widely supported scaling agreement among companies and mining pools following years of debate, some have argued that this is the decision should be made by the consumer. These companies, some argue, have continued pushing the proposal through even though many developers who have the most familiar with Bitcoin code find fault with the technical implementation and issues with disagree with the stated goals. And those same companies have been losing with a couple of details about the status of the proposal itself. So yeah, there hasn't been a release of the code, there hasn't been a release of the proposal, there hasn't been a release of the mechanisms that will enable the two megabyte hard force, which is supposed to occur six months later, what the signaling is, what the code looks like. It's all being done behind closed doors. And the fact that it's these companies and miners, it's not the full consensus of, you know, users, node operators, um, everybody. Uh, signaling and agreeing with this is one of the biggest problems with the proposal, and there's been a bit of a pushback. Now, saying that 2X, 2x was kickstarted on an invite only meeting from, composed of the big companies with large mining pools in space. From the beginning, one of the main criticisms levied against the segment 2x is that the development process isn't open to everyone, and many argue this process is a dive into the Bitcoin history of open source development. There's certainly evidence to the contrary. Uh, PTC1 and Segwit. 2x software information called is hosted on GitHub where any developer is welcome to point out bugs and shift improvements. The development process indeed already led to major changes in the project's direction. I assume we're in the main list, the developer for everyone in the community who at least peruse is not supposed to. And otherwise, the effort to stay true to, to the secretive or open source. There is an invite only Slack group where companies originally pledged to contribute or representative like Arbor, BitLeary, BitGo, BitPay, Blockchain, uh, Block, uh, BLQ, BTC. Ledger, uh, Risk Labs, and Zappo. Others included in the Slack group are OB1, Curse, and developers from alternative Bitcoin implementations like Bitcoin XP, which aims to increase the Bitcoin block size parameter to 8 megabytes in 2016. Most of these companies and individuals who have committed to developing resources, though, declined to provide specific information in response to CoinDisk requests to understand their involvement. See, I'm the company who didn't respond at all. Others confirmed that they were involved in development but declined to be more specific about which developers are involved or what people are working on. And who, who, what, you. We are also contributing technical expertise to Segwit 2x code, which is in the test space right now on a separate test net. Just check that slide. Said Valley Valvo, CEO of the Bit Theory Group. Many companies responded to the same similar vein. Yet Val Valvo continued. We are also working in the working group that is researching, building, and reviewing and testing the upgrade and help businesses out the upgrade as well. Companies are currently testing the code on the newly developed deployed testnet. On Thursday, the group released a public testnet faucet, which produced fake Bitcoins for developers to use. The number of developers are turning to their effort as soon as the GitHub, the Segwit 2x project, realizes. These two resources make it easy to see.
be a few of the people involved in development who were close to contributions were Block, ICO, Jeff Garzik, and first CIO, uh, first IO, CTO, Christian Jeffrey. While the digital currency group or DG, the CEO of Barry Silva, is often viewed as the public face and linchpin of the effort, it's often called the Silva Agreement, uh, which we talked about in, um, we talked about the proposal. He noted he's not involved in the development side at all, and so he can't comment on the process any more than the words are published. Despite knowledge of the process, there are gaps in the community understanding of the scheme developed that should speak specifically contributing to the effort and what they're contributing. Missing peer review. Those who are not contributing according to Lightning Lab CEO Elizabeth Stark are those who have disagreed with the proposal in some way. Stark said her company provided technical feedback to the Q to segment to X because they didn't agree with the proposal for various technical reasons. And according to Stark, they were not invited to discuss any further. The proposal has like zero developer consensus, she said, referring to the big point called four developers who most of them have all right rejected the project yet. Unfortunately, uh, the, the mailing list is only for people that agree with segment to X. Again, opponents said the philosophy contrasts with the Bitcoin open development process so far, which invites all developers to contribute their ideas. A loose group of volunteer developers work on Bitcoin Core, for example, where development for the most part is done out in the open. On the other hand, SegWit2x closed approach is to development allows people to self mitigate and shield you from peer review and public commentary, wrote Box Stream CEO Adam Back in an email to working group. Continue the forming of the station and closed community channels is not inviting to you. Why would this project be special when you need to work in closed, controlled environments and not participate openly with like six or so other, so other implementations and hundred developers across dozens of different companies, institutions, and individuals? So this is where we're getting a lot of uh, pushback. So you're not getting so much from companies or even the miners, but a lot of users are, are rejecting it, stating because of the closed uh, means of them developing, because it's giving too much to the miners in a sense, but also more importantly because what people really, really, truly want is not necessarily SegWit, is the, the raising of the block size. So the transaction fees will be lower, so more things can be done on the blockchain, and everything can be kept on, ch on chain. And we'll talk about that when we talk about the way of Bitcoin, about how people view you know, Bitcoin. So here's some uh, discussion on RPTC. This was put by, posted by um, Lynchagon. Uh, miners can renege on the 2x after seg SegWit activation by simply going back to mining on core after SegWit activation. No client modification needed. So someone please correct me if I'm wrong, but until just now, I was under the impression that miners should have to continue to mine on the SegWit 2x client after SegWit activation or else they would lose their valid block. However, I learned that SegWit 2x has added compatibility for core 0 0.13, 1.1, and BIP 148, which there, you know, we just read about how BIP begins. begin. And BIP9, the, the SW uh, activation will happen under uh, SegWit2x. By the means of offering non segwitted blocks, making 100% of mine blocks signaling for SegWit, thus triggering the BIP9 activation period. Because this is still a BIP9 activation, both core and BIP148 clients recognize the SW um, as activated, and all three clients will, will relay valid blocks. If this is the case, what stops any miners from simply going back to mining on core after activation? They don't even have to modify the SegWit 2x client or remove the flat day. They can just simply mine a core and then reduce perfectly valid blocks. That means the only incentive to stay on the SegWit 2x is to fork away from core to control well and 2 megabytes. 2 megabytes. But if that doesn't happen into the 2 megabyte, 2 megabyte hard work, this is a good incentive, but it's easy enough. And then here's a little clarification in the post. You can kind of read the dialogue here, but this is from Omni. Yeah, but activating SegWit soon, but the uh, the hard fork six months out might get well get us to okay SegWit is activated, as Shillin pointed out. But I'm pretty sure it won't get us to this two megabyte hard fork is activated, as Shillin point because the whole uh, core circuits of hard fork bad bad one will just continue after this. And honestly, I'm pretty sure that I and many other big blockers will throw the towel. So there won't you know be too many real people left who will even who can or even want to counter the paid sock, sock packets for uh, BS slash core. If the miners are too weak to get bigger blocks with the support of the same people in the ecosystem, I'm pretty sure that they will be too weak to get a 2 megabyte fork without us. Not that we are here, not that we here matter much in the grand scheme of things, but activating SegWit without any hard fork at the same time would indeed, would indeed kill the big block movement. Bye bye Bitcoin, hello Ripple, hello uh, demonetization. And 10 years down the road, folks will say, do you remember the Bitcoin craze? What a crazy stupid idea that was. Everyone knows you pay with iris scan, or better yet, your brain implant, and kind of goes from there. 
I'll consider two, uh, Segwave 2X the failure of the Nakamoto consensus against capture by outsiders, plain and simple, and I will exit Bitcoin. So a lot of people um, consider this boxing Bitcoin and changing the nature of it to a decentralized system, from a decentralized system to a decentralized system. And we'll talk about it when we talk about uh, the differences between most segwits and uh, segwit in general and a lot of the problems and issues. And this also goes with the whole um, lightning network um, and uh, side chain. Uh, there's a lot of people that are also very much against it as well for the simple fact that they strongly believe that everything should occur on chain, on Bitcoin in it itself. So segwit 2x equals no hard work. How can we accept segwit uh, 2x when segwit is irreversible and there's no question that there will be hard fork. The bigger and most contentious issue of a 2 megabyte hard fork is one that still needs to be settled. Per the New York agreement, a 2 megabyte hard fork must be activated within 6 months. What software will be activated in the 2 megabyte hard fork? Will, the Bitcoin, will, the, will that be Bitcoin Core? Unlikely since they didn't sign the agreement and Segwit 2x possibly, but how is that going to be rolled out? Bitcoin Unlimited? Burp 0055 already has a target date of October 18th, but allows bigger blocks larger than 2 megabytes. Furthermore, if a client other than Bitcoin Core is what the New York agreement signers will run, how is that repository going to get managed? Will Bitcoin Core developers be involved or not? If Segwit 2x is proposed as a merged core, and what if Core rejects it? None of these questions have been answered, and we are by no means out of the woods yet. So signaling is occurring, none of this has been really sorted out, but somehow August 1st, is going to happen with the user activated software, which, by the way, Bitcoin Core is not a supporter of either. So, so to do, posted this. Should we not accept the Segwit 2x proposal at all, with or without the 2 megabyte part? As Bitcoin holders, we should refuse it and endorse a Bitman's UA, a hard fork Bitcoin spinoff instead. If we big blockers create a Bitcoin spinoff coin without Segwit and then buy those coins, then Bitmain and BBTC will very soon start to mine it, even if they didn't start mining Bitmain's user activated hardcore coin specifically. Shortly thereafter, the other miners will start to mine it too because the miners follow money and potential mining profit. If there are more of us big blockers than there are small blockers and we have more money, we probably do, then shortly after the big blocker coin has been created, we'll get the biggest market cap and keep the name Bitcoin. That time, I recommend that whoever gets the GitHub repository because there's there will be multiple competing implementations this time. Uh, keys don't give them to Walter Van Deerland, who currently has the uh, keys to um, the GitHub repository, which is the Bitcoin Core. And then there's the rejections, which is completely rejecting both uh, Segwit 2x or 80 Segwit, which is rejected um, absolutely. The network is going, to, going for a split anyway, so everyone will get what they want. So Segwit lovers will get Segwit only, and big block lovers will get big blocks only. There's really no point in keeping people who hate each other and have drastically different views in one room forcefully. The market will sort out which side was right. That is, I believe that what Block Free and so afraid of is the mar of that the market will destroy them. And then they, 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 the Reddit post kind of diverges down into all these different scenarios. So the only company I have um, seen anyone really seeking to talk about against um, Segwit 2x publicly is Samurai Wallet, which is a Bitcoin wallet. It states it is a privacy focused wallet. And we might do some reviews of these different wallets on Erosion Thought Bubble, but they tweeted June 19th, which is when the uh, Chinese mining mode um, mining pools were signaling for Segwit 2x, even though there's no real plan or concrete plan, if you will. Um, you should run BIP 148. Uh, Segwit 2x isn't for you, it's for miners to save face. Run BIP148 to keep miners honest and enforce user demands. And this was just a quote tweet of Eric Labazo's tweet, which is, It's fine if it gets Segwit activated on 80% plus nodes that are already supported. It doesn't mean you should run it yourself. And the one of the first developers to actually prefer BIP148, the user activated soft fork over BIP141. The minor activated soft fork is uh, Amir Taik. Uh, he's acceptable and preferred. And there's a list, uh, here, let me pull up the list here, of where the developers stand. And I have a link in the show notes. So, it has a list here in the column of developer, where their affiliation, if they're a core developer, if they're a classic tumble bit, where they come from, wallet or whatever. Uh, Segwit itself, BIP 141, 
BIP 148, uh, deployment methods, uh, BIP 149, or BIP 91, hard fork bundles, the Sobert agreement. So pretty much core is no down the chain. Um, you're not seeing any core developers, or many of the developers on this list are not for Sacred 2X or um, compatible oriented uh, or CCLP, which I've never really heard of, and I will just have to look about it. That's basically they're calling it the Silbit Agreement. And the different deployment methods. Um, and SegWit itself is BIP 141. So whether to do 148 or BIP 149 or BIP 91 are the different methods. And we'll talk about these when we talk about it. But I have a link in the show notes here to those um, developers. And the ones that are acceptable are BTC Drake, uh, Wong Chan, and BTC Drake is a core developer. Uh, Christian Drecker is C Lightning. Uh, Mark Finberg is, uh, prefers this method. Eric Labazo is acceptable. Norpo73, who's with Tumblebit, is wanting this. Uh, Rusty Russell prefers it. He's from C Lightning. Amir Tariq is acceptable and prefers it. And Peter Todd is a preferred but acceptable method for B148. And he is affiliated with Core. And a lot of the uh, core developers are preferred, you know, straight up down the line for BIP 140 for SegWit, except for NoPar73 or TumbleBit. He's, uh, he thinks it's weak. And then you get um, across the board different answers from no to acceptable to for to wanting for BIP 148, the actual implementation. And it also has a list in here of the different businesses that are... Um, for SegWit itself, the deployment method and the hard fork bundles is so big agreement, and this is an ongoing list, if you will. Billis, the payment exchange, is no, so that's another company that is no, and everyone else is not really, there's not much stance, so it's an ongoing development, if you will. So really what it comes down to is we're going to see whether or not there's going to be an actual fork between August 1st and August 4th. And there's some saying that because of the signaling and the fact that uh, SegWit is bundled into all these different, from the core, Bitcoin Unlimited, and uh, even the agreement protocols that the nodes that are operating out there, that are operating core or unlimited, uh, even BIP 148 nodes are going to accept this uh, signaling, if you will, and accept the SegWit um, blocks. But if they're running BIP 148, they can still, I guess, either reject the blocks or signal for um, their implementation as well at the same time. So it's a matter of who's going to pull the trigger, if you will. And we'll talk about the um, the doomsday scenario, if you, if you will. But that's pretty much wrapping up it. Once again, even within agreement, things, um, or at least a proposed agreement, things are still very contentious. and. We'll see whether or not Bitcoin is going to hard fork. And we'll talk about it in the way of Bitcoin, how I feel about the, the hard fork and some of the, particularly what Bitmain is doing, these attacks um, to kind of um, destroy the split chain, if you will, um, which I'm very much a disagreement of. It might actually not even technically be even legal. But we'll, when we get there, we'll talk about that. So that's it for the episode. Uh, thank you for listening, and to the moon. This has been a Hiroshima Space Odyssey Network production. <laughs>